Let's go. Uh, my name is Jeff Merriman, your newly elected uh, commissioner. Uh, one of three here in uh, Rochester. So we have our uh, new chief here, Nathan Drake. Uh, he was a volunteer. He was part of uh, the community ever since he was probably a hire. So he's lived here a long time. And uh, we just promoted him and hired him as our chief. And uh, wanted to have a town hall here so he can introduce himself, give some knowledge uh, about the department. And I uh, just want to turn it over to him real quick. Okay. So my name is Nathan Drake. Um, so just, I'll start just a little bit about me. Thank you for the introduction, Commissioner. So uh, I, uh, I started here as a volunteer uh, with West Thurston Fire uh, my senior year of high school. Uh, I grew up in the community, uh, went to high school here, graduated here, lived here my entire life in the Rochester area. And uh, so this, is, this really is my community. Let me start by saying that. Um, I, after becoming, after being a volunteer, starting that, um, like I said, my senior year of high school, I went to college, uh, volunteered during college, uh, worked up at District 9 through their program um, while I was in college for a little while, running calls up there, uh, and uh, and then got hired uh, full-time uh, here uh, at that time, District 1, Rochester, uh, as a firefighter uh, in 2008. So I've worked with uh, at the fire department ever since. Um, Worked as a firefighter, uh, lieutenant, training officer, um, uh, interim assistant chief for a little bit, and now uh, fire chief. So uh, I just want to thank everybody uh, for the opportunity to do this, uh, and thank everybody for coming out to this uh, community hall. So I think this is very important for us, for me, and for our department to be out there in the public, right? Talking to you, knowing what the community's concerns are. Uh, Yes, I grew up in this community, and I have concerns of myself with the direction the department's going and some ideas to move us forward, but getting community input for that is super vital, um, and uh, it's required for us to be successful as an agency moving forward. So, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, some of our plans kind of moving forward, and I'll kind of say just general plans moving forward. Uh, as I stated, we want to be out in the community, and we're trying to do that more. Well, we're trying to be out there in more in the community as our firefighters, out at community events. We're trying to be in the schools more for uh, education with our school children. Um, and any opportunity that we have to get out there, we're trying to engage with the community. Okay. Um, yes, we're still doing this. Run the calls. Um, and when people call 911, being available and showing up professional and well-trained and able to do our job, we're still doing that. But we only engage with a very small percentage of our public by running those calls, right? Um, so we want to engage with the public in non-emergency events as well, uh, through these community halls, through this public education. So that's some of our plans moving forward, is just to be out there in the community more. Um, for the crews, that means in the schools, at those events. For me, that means doing help, town halls like this, um, going to homeowners associations, going to any of those meetings that I may have an opportunity to um, meet with people. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you'll see more, I'm hopeful that you'll see more of me in the community. Um, and if you do, uh, please come up and talk to me. Uh, again, I'm open to input. I want community's input. Um, I want to know what we're doing right. As a fire department, I also want to know what we're doing wrong, right? Uh, because it is important. Mm -hmm. And each and every one of your community members, you have ownership in our department. Um, and we do want to hear about that. So I do have just some, I'm not even going to say an agenda. Um, I have some talking points that I do want to talk about. Uh, and then I will open it up for some questions as well. So. Uh, I'm going to try to answer those questions the best I can. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm a firefighter, and uh, I got in this job originally when I was young and uh, into this job because of the firefighting stuff. Um, 
and over the course, I have taken more administrative responsibilities uh, through my job, um, and I've actually enjoyed it quite well, hence why I'm here now. Uh, but I have brought Shannon, this is Shannon, she's our administrative manager, um, and so she's gonna help me with any budget questions that I'm not able to answer. I'm gonna try to answer the best I can, but Shannon uh, is there with uh, a little bit more in depth in the budget and has a lot more know-how than I do on it. So uh, I did want to introduce her. So with that, uh, we'll kind of get started with some stuff. So um, as I'm just gonna go briefly over the history, I don't want to bore anybody, but over the last several years, um, we've had some struggles, right? Um, and as a department, we've had some financial struggles over the years. Uh, in 2021 and 2022, um, our budget was looking quite well. And we had a, a maintenance and operations levy, uh, we had our levy, we were working towards all that stuff. And in 2022, uh, we failed uh, a maintenance and operations levy, an MNO levy, in, in 2022. We actually failed it twice. We failed it in August of 2022, um, and then we ran the exact same levy in November of 2022, which also failed. After that failure, uh, we saw our, our budget uh, drop by 35%, uh, a pretty drastic decrease. Now, we took that, um, although I will say it was a struggle for our department, uh, but we, we did take that in stride uh, as best we could, right? Uh, after that, we were able to focus some of our stuff, slim our budget um, to make sure that we were able to properly provide that service um, that we always have. Uh, now, was it difficult? Yes, it was. Uh, last year in 2020, Three, let me get my years right here, 2023, uh, we ran a lid lift. Um, what the lid lift did is it restored our, uh, our base levy uh, to that $1.50 um, amount, that $1.50 per thousand, which is the base rate for fire departments. Um, and the highest we can go with a base levy. So we did restore that in 2023 and started collecting here in 2024. Um, and that was kind of, uh, it was kind of a lifeline, right? We really did need that as an apartment um, to stabilize our budget, budget moving forward. Uh, the only, one of the difficult things that we had in 2023, though, is with that slash in the budget, that 35% decrease in our budget, um, we as an agency ended up putting a lot of things on the back burner, right? There's a lot of things we had to put off. A lot of maintenance of apparatus, of our equipment um, and our stations, we kind of had to slide that stuff back because we didn't have the money in the budget to address those things um, right away. So we did kind of slide that stuff back to the back burner a little bit because we had to. Um, in 2024, we are trying to pick some of that stuff up um, and address some of that, and we are, um, but uh, we're not getting all of it done as much as we but we are we are picking some of those those things that we pushed back in 2023 um, to readdress some of those issues. So one of the things I do want to focus on though is during those times in, during 2023 when our budget was tight, um, during this year uh, when our budget is still a little tight, but we're we are operating within our means, right? Um, we still operate currently with a balanced budget right, in 2024, and that's always been our objective, right? Our objective has always been to run our fire department within the budget restraints that we have from the voters' taxes. We have not went out and taken out loans. Um, we have to have an operating reserve for three months while waiting to collect taxes. We don't take out a loan from the county for that, right? We roll that into reserves, and we use that responsibly. Right. We don't go outside of our means. That's always been our goal. Um, and it will continue to be our goal moving forward. And also with that, during those times when we had those restraints, we still operated with a high level of service. Okay? During 2023, 2024, even though we have budget re restrictions, we still responded with good quality care 
right? A professional, highly trained practice, <coughs> right? That's always been our goal as well. Because ultimately, that's what you pay for. That is a service that we are here to provide. Um, that is actually the only service we are ultimately here to provide, is that when someone calls 911, um, we show up with good working equipment, highly trained and skilled uh, personnel to address that issue, right? Um, that's also been our goal. And we've, we've been able to do that successfully. Um, and that will be our goal long term. We'll be carrying on those successes of, of providing that high level of service with those skilled professional uh, responders, right? So another thing that we have done as a, I believe is a success, is our volunteer program. Um, I would say probably starting in 2019, 2020, uh, I don't want to blow it all on COVID because it's not all COVID's fault. Um, we were actually struggling with our volunteer program a little bit prior to that. But we did see a lack in our volunteer program, uh, right? Uh, our community has always been a shining star when it comes to fire departments and volunteer engagement uh, in firefighting, right? Uh, I always say that fire departments are one of the few careers that you can still go and volunteer at. Um, and I say that because I volunteered for three years. And if I didn't have that opportunity to volunteer for three years, I would guarantee I wouldn't be in the same spot. And there's a lot of firefighters out there that can say the exact same thing, right? They didn't have a chance. And we still want to provide that to the community and get that service back from those volunteers. And that's been our focus, right? So I'm happy to report, like, this year, um, so far this year, we have brought on 12 new volunteers, right? Um, in 2023, or sorry, 2024. Uh, we currently have nine volunteers in EMT class in the county, right? Just to put that in perspective, there is 29 people currently in EMT class in the whole county, for Thurston County, and we have nine of them from our district, right? Um, that is huge. We have, in addition to those nine, we have five that are in fire academy, also done. So in the last year, we have been working towards getting those 14 new volunteers that we've brought on, those 14 through all that training. Um, and here in the next couple months, they'll be out on the road. Okay. They're all actually out there right now, riding with our crews, providing assistance, getting experience. Um, but by next year, they'll be out there fully privileged, um, certified, uh, professional, highly trained. So, so we're going to continue to do that, and that will be our goal. It will continue that volunteer program. Uh, we're going to do uh, interviews here at the end of this month, and we'll bring on more. So. Those are some of the successes we've had, um, and those are the big ones uh, that we've had. We've still provided great service, uh, and we're trying to get and we're getting our volunteers uh, service out there. Uh, we currently, at West Thurston have Fire, has the, have the most active volunteers um, within the county, right? We do have the most volunteer firefighters in the county currently. Uh, my goal is to keep that going, and let's grow it and make it even more. Uh, way stronger for our community. So, uh, now let's get into some of the challenges and the financial challenges. Um, and I just want to, I, I want to state something here really quick that we, so the purpose of this, uh, I will be talking about the levy that we'll be going out on. Um, I'm not advocating for uh, support or against that levy, uh, but I do want to make sure that we're providing you as community with the best factual information to make that decision. So, and I'll try to answer those questions the best I can in that. So this is just for us to be starting uh, writing some information. Is yes. there ever a time when you don't go for the opportunity to get more money? What? Is there ever a time, like you, you just announced to me that you're going to go for more money in this yes. cycle? It seems yes. like I never remember any time that, you, that the fire district isn't asking for so. Yeah, and, and uh, you're in a sense right. Uh, we, there has been that endless cycle, it seems like. Um, now, I, I'll explain really briefly for the funding 
is our funding um, with the current rules in the RCW for a firefighter funding, right? We collect a dollar fifty per thousand on our base fire rate. Now, what happens is with the uh, as property values go up or as more buildings come in, our revenue can only expand on one percent per that dollar, dollar fifty per thousand. So, our overall budget, um, even though we might have development or prices go up, uh, as they always seem to do. We can only actually collect as a fire district on that dollar fifty um, one percent per thousand, one percent of increased revenue um, per year, right? Um, so if it seems like it, you're, you're right. It is. Well, it what is, is that figure that you got for or did you get for twenty four? So yeah, so so the total budget. So the figure, the so the figure we're asking for in the lib or in the M and O. No, no. What, what, what was your operation budget for uh, 24 for this year? For 2024, our operational budget is Mayor Firefighter <laughs> seven seven point six million seven point six million for the whole operating budget for the whole fire department. Now, what does that get? Right? What does that? What do we have with that? Right? Um, because that that's a lot of money. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you 110. percent That is a lot of money. Um, what do we have with that though? We provide 24 hour staffing, right? For seven personnel minimal. They're 24 hour, 365, all the time available. Minimal of seven personnel out of three stations, minimal, right? Okay, uh, we have 31 full time staff, 26 volunteer responders, and we talked about that number growing, right? A uh, total of 13 support volunteers on top of that that support our, there may not be responders, but they support us on other events and things, by admin staff, um, a total of 25 staff vehicles, five stations, right? There's a lot of stuff that we have to support with that budget. Um, and it is, it is challenging, right? It is challenging for us to do that. We forgot the Medicare too. Uh, and we do have the Medicare, right? Now, now we don't pay with that for that exactly, um, but it is out of our station, right? Um, and we would supplement that. Uh, that is out of the the one one station, right? The the, the Grand Mount station. There is a Medicaid out there. Now that's manned by Tumwater Medics. We don't pay for that, right? Um, but we man them in that station, so they're available to our community down there as ALS providers. So you're 100 percent right. It, it, it seems like we're asking for money all the time, well, because we are. Um, now, part of that is just the limitations that we're in as a fire district and, a, and an RFA of the money, tax money that we could collect. Um, I'll, I'll be blunt. I think in the past there has been some. I, not, I'm not even going to say mismanagement. There's been some. There's been some misleads on some of the money that we've had in the past and when we've asked for money, right? Uh, the money that we're going to be asking for in November is a it's a reasonable amount. We're not we're not trying to fully expand our budget. Um, it's only a one year levy, meaning we're only going to be collecting it for one year, right? Um, but it will support us for multiple past that. And the reason why is we kind of we, we need to have a reset, right? As an agency, we need to kind of reset our budget get back to our new normal of an agency. Um, we, we did a good job of slimming our budget back in 2023, but we put a lot of that stuff on the back burner. And that stuff will continue to sit on the back burner and become way more costly repairs if we're not able to address those in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so we do. And trust me, I, I hate being up here asking for more money. It's, uh, it's not something that I necessarily want to do. Um, and, but it is important that we are honest as a fire department with you and telling you this is the support that we need um, to be able to provide that high quality service that the community frankly deserves. So, um, so you're, you're right that we ask for money. And I don't no, know if I'm right, it was just a question. No, no, but I, I will say, you're, you're right, if it seems like we're asking for money, uh, every couple of years for the deck for the last 
um, I'll just say decade, um, it's because we kind of have it, right? Um, and my hope is that we get to the point where we're doing a more sustainable budget, right? Um, and I'll, I'll say our budget is sustainable. We need to get where we're managing that in a way, right? We are seeing community growth, which is beneficial to our budget, right? And that community growth is important for us. Um, but if we only do that community growth with the lid lift money, that standard levy, um, we can only collect 1% of that growth in our budget, right? When we're in that normal taxing, so. I have a question. Yeah. So what are the, what are the items that you are planning to, that have been on the back burner that you want to spend yeah. money on? Yeah, so some of the stuff that we have, um, we have some, We have some, um, I'll, I'll start with some facility maintenance. We've had some facility maintenance um, things that have come up, such as uh, we have some roof, some leaking roofs at some of our stations that we've done some, I'll just say some temporary patchwork on, right, to stop those leaks. Um, well, eventually those, those stop gaps will only work so long, right? Um, so we need to do a more intent repair um, on those roofs to keep that damage from happening. So we've been able to manage that fairly good, but we're looking into the future, right? And, and let me be perfectly clear, like, again, our budget for 2024 is a balanced budget, right? And we're trying to keep it that way. Um, so for us to keep that pretty balanced budget, we're not, uh, thank you. <laughs> for us to keep that pretty balanced budget, right? We've had to put some of those larger projects that maybe are immediate concerns to us because, but we, we see them coming down the road, right? So that's one example. Um, some of our apparatus, right? Our, our fleets are, our fleet is aging. We do have some fairly new apparatus, which are running fantastic, um, as they should. But we have some older apparatus that are, you know, they're 25 years old. Um, they're getting up there in age. And they've been ran pretty hard. So one of them we got as a used apparatus, which was a pretty good deal. Um, but that thing's running pretty hard. And we know that at some point, we will have some kind of catastrophic failure for that. Now, what that come out to, that right now, we don't have the excess money because we're trying to keep that balanced budget to repair that apparatus. So what we do, we down that apparatus. Um, we have enough apparatus right now where having one down isn't gonna be a catastrophic thing for us, right? We will still be able to run calls. Now, but if we have two go down catastrophically, um, now we have a bigger decision to make, right? So what, what we're trying to do with this, with this money um, that we'd be collecting in 2025 is look forward into the future with those stuff and how we can maintain this stuff for, and get ahead of some of these issues rather than trying to constantly play catch up. I'll tell you right now, we are constantly playing catch up, right? When something gets down, we're fixing it uh, the best we can um, versus trying to get ahead of those issues just because we're, again, trying to work in that balanced budget. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, yes, please. You forgot to mention the well. Oh, yeah. yeah. A, a big one. Uh, one, one six, which is our Maytown fire station, um, there's a pretty big well issue there. Uh, the water that they drilled there, it has extremely hard, harsh water, um, so much that we end up replacing uh, pipes and pumps and everything um, well, every couple of years. We just replaced every a, year right now. Every year we, we uh, replaced like a, the main so pump um, there every year because it's just yeah. corrosive, crappy water, right? And uh, there's no, the only thing we can do different is drill a new well. I do have that's, that's pretty costly. So that, that would be another example. Thank you. I do have a, a, a yeah. question. Yeah. Um, with the county, we had an ERR budget, like a replacement budget. Oh, sorry, what was that? In the county, we had what we call an equipment replacement budget for yeah. the budget. Do you guys have something like that? Yeah, so, so we, so her question is, do we have an equipment replacement budget? So an idea that we can stay ahead of that, right? And um, rather than going out for a bond for a new apparatus, a new fire truck, a new APA, whatever that may 
we, um, we put a little away, a savings account basically, we save up for that apparatus um, to purchase that apparatus, you know, 10 years down the road, right? You save up so much money every, uh, every year, and then 10 years down the road, you buy a new fire truck. We operated that like that for a long time, um, and that was our plan, right? We were able to do that. Um, we were able to buy apparatus uh, that way. And um, in, after 2022, so in 2023, that was one of the first things that got cut, right? One of the first things that you cut is, well, your savings, right? Or at least putting into your savings. So that's what we did, right? We cut that. We cut, we quit putting savings away for brand new fire trucks, right? Um, so, so we do not currently have that, right? Um, now, some of our, some of our long-term goals and part of that resetting, that budget, is to try to put that money away um, every year so we can start saving up for that. Okay? Um, now, that's one of the challenging things to do, right? Uh, I gotta be honest, it's no different than your personal finances, right? Um, it's, it's the toughest thing you can do is try to save that money um, and put it away um, and go buy a new car with cash, right? That's, that's honestly what we try to do with our fire trucks because really that's one of our only options for purchasing um, when you make a large purchase like that is either bonds, you take out a loan, um, or we pay cash. And paying cash is the most cost effective for us. Right now, we're not in that point. We do not have the savings, we do not have the apparatus um, replacement reserves that we put in because that got depleted that we, we quit putting into that fund in 2023. Um, we're not planning on, and unless we get to the end of this year and we got some extra money, which we'll take a look at that, but that'll be a decision the commissioners have to make, but um, uh, we, we have not been putting that money away. Um, and that's one of the things we would like to do. So when it comes time to surplus out, a piece of equipment, yeah, you know, you have the budget to replace it. That apparatus gets sold off. Does that money that you generate from that go back into it, it, your replacement? Um, yeah, so we've, we've done a couple different things depending on how we surplus out rigs in the past. Um, it either comes back into the general fund and then gets reallocated either to that replacement fund, um, or we just kind of calculate that into the the general cost, right? Hey, we're going to deplete. Um, we're going to take an extra fifty thousand out of the general budget um, to buy this apparatus using that replacement fund, knowing that when we sell this apparatus, we're going to get fifty grand back in there to put back in that. Right? So is that determined by the commissioner? Um, the surplus yeah. of the apparatus? Yes. Yeah. So the commissioner is uh, passed that through the resolution um, with any kind of. Uh, they, they, I would recommend that as the chief, right? That hey. We bought this new apparatus. We have this one reserve that we don't need anymore. Uh, we want to surplus it, uh, and then uh, they would pass a resolution to surplus that apparatus. And that's how we get rid of, honestly, uh, everything. Right? Uh, we have to keep track of. We're, we're evaluated by the state auditor every year. And part of that is we have to have a very clear policy of how we buy stuff, and then also how we get rid of stuff, either damaged. Um, or when it's no longer used to us and we surplus it. So do you get any state funding for any of this stuff? No, so fire department funding, fire department is fully funded by local class, local tax dollars. Okay. Um, and I'll actually break down like, <clears throat> our funding um, of that 7.4, what did you say, 7.4? <laughs> what was our, our total budget for this year? Uh, Total expense, no, it was total expenses was 7.6 oh. So um, a majority of that is the, that local levy money that we get, um, the lo local taxes. Right? Um, now we do have very small other things that come in, um, you know, other local inter uh, interlocal agreements that we have with the state buildings and state facilities, right? Um, you know, our transport money, we are a transporting agency, so when we transport some of the hospital, we build that, and then we collect some of that money, and that goes back into our budget, right? Um, so we have a couple more uh, grants. Last year, we got a reward from the grant. Um, 
for a recruit retention coordinator full time that focus on our volunteer program, hence why it's been doing so well. Um, that we got that position funded fully on a grant, right? So, so it's so never a set amount. No, it's, it's never. We get we get. I will tell you, we get nothing from the state, right? The state of Washington, um, Thurston County as a whole does not give anything to us. Our money is always it's local funding as a junior taxing district. That is how we get our money, fully. Um, all the other stuff that we get, the grants, the interlocal grants, that's always that's stuff that we have to work for, right? Um, that we get, uh, and we're going to continue to apply for grants. Um, that grant that we have now, um, we're trying to use it to the full extent, trying to get our volunteer program going. Uh, and and all the other fire districts. Yeah, yeah, we, we do, we do. We're not the only ones that's having the struggle and, and going up with grants, but we'll continue to work on that. Sure. So, so that's how our funding works, right? And, and, Really, local tax dollars is that's how we, we always do the dance. That, that's that's how it is. Um, so, so let me talk about the, the levy a little bit on what we're asking for in November. So, um, what we're asking for is a it's a levy for thirty eight cents per thousand, right? So, thirty eight cents per thousand for one year. So, uh, it's going to be on the ballot in November, and we would only collect that thirty eight cents for a one year term, the year of 2025, right? Our objective with that money is to take that money and not just use all that money in 2025, but to spread that out and have that money fully support us. Uh, that's what uh, Chan's been doing a great job of, planning our budget, not just for next year, but also for 2026, right? Um, so that money would support us for 2025 and 2026 and really allow us to kind of reset our budget, right? Get it back to um, a normal, a sustainable, where we're able to take care of those apparatus maintenance and those facility maintenance straight away and not throw them on the back burner and not be able to take care of them. So you're, yeah. so you're saying 38 cents, is that 38 cents is gonna bring it up to a dollar fifty? No, so we're currently at a dollar fifty right now. So, you're so it'd be a 38 cents in excess for that, only for one year. Right. Can I so, get some perspective on that? Yeah. So our house, we live off 180 Guava. Our house, our, you know, everything was assessed at about $450. Oh, yes. yes. So it went up pretty drastically. That'd be like $170 a year. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, depending on your house value, right, because it's all based on the home value, right, the taxable home value. So um, that's just going to, that'll kind of, that 38 cents is based on that per thousand. Of that, and again, that's an additional, additional in addition to that dollar fifty per thousand for only one year, right? Um, so that's kind of that is what we're we're going out to the voters for, um, and and with that money to support that program. Um, one of the programs that I would also like to uh, focus on is supporting with that money um, is our volunteer program, right? I talked about us bringing in all these people which is absolutely fantastic, right? It's great that we have these volunteers that are coming in, um, supporting our community, and I, I will say, they're, they're some young help people. They, they really want to work hard and do a great job, and we want to support them in that as a department and agency. With that, though, for us to bring on a new volunteer, it does cost us money, and that money adds up. Uh, and that's the thing we're experiencing this year. Again, we're able to balance our budget this year and make that happen. Um, but for next year, for us to continue to bring on and, re and bring on, you know, 12 to 20 volunteers a year, we have to have, we, we cannot do it if our budget continues like that in 2025 and 2026, right? Um, and we want to, we will continue to support our volunteers, but we'll have to reduce that, that number of what we're bringing in if you're one, because it does cost a lot of money. And I'll go through those details here as well. So yeah. what you're saying is that uh, you only get one percent increase, even though my house doubled in the last two years. You only get of that dollar fifty one percent increase of that. Yeah. yeah. So how the how the current um, and I 
and I, I wish I had the uh, initiative in here in my brain, but I, I do not. Um, but it was an initiative that was put back in the, well, I think, yeah. early 2000s, late 90s by Iman um, that capped the locally, local taxing district's ability to go past 1% of budget, budget increase even with a rise in property. And that's why actually our, our, our tax rate, as we continue through, our tax rate actually not, naturally declines. As the community grows, right, as your housing prices go up, um, you'll actually see your tax rate for the fire districts and the local taxing districts um, drop down. So they'll start at $1.50, and then I'll go down to like a $1.47, and then a $1.40, and over time, that naturally kind of declines. So that is how it sets up. Now, let me, full transparency, right? The lid lift that we did pass last year, right? It actually, one of the things we asked with that lid lift is to go above and beyond that. Now, so for a limited amount of time, we're able to collect more than that 1%, um, but that's only for a short amount of time, and then that drops off, and then we start seeing that decline over time. Um, and that's why we have to go out for a lid lift about every six to 10 years, right? As an agency, um, we have to go out for a lid lift every six to 10 years because our tax rate naturally just declines. And what a lid lift does is kind of restores that back to the dollar. So. And your share is a buck and a half per thousand, you say? Yep. So it's a buck and a half per thousand, but when my house doubled in price, you didn't get a buck and a half on the second half. No. Somebody did. Someone did, not us. Okay, okay now, so, could, is there any initiative that we could pass that says you get your share of that instead of whoever got it? So, so let me let me just, um, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not a tax expert, but so when you have your taxes, right, your taxes are broken down in several different things, right? The state takes their piece for property taxes, the county takes theirs, and all these different things. If you look at our, our your, your tax form, I'm just going off of what mine says, um, there's a little bar there that'll say like fire district and it will have that percentage. And it'll actually say the tax rate. So yes, ours drop. Now, as a junior taxing dist district, that's the parameters that we are under, right? That we are only allowed that 1%. Yeah, the state, the state, the county, they're not under those same rules. And they continue to collect off that assessed value, even beyond that call, that 1%. My real question is, instead of you going for this uh, bond, can you, can you put it up for like a year that the people can say, you're entitled to your fair share of that money instead of 1%? And instead of the people getting it and got it, it was meant to go to you. Yeah. A buck and a half of a thousand was meant to go to your, my house doubled, but you don't get a buck and a half of the second 500,000. Mm -hmm. That, that would be that would be nice. Now that takes a initiative, right? A state initiative to change that um, RCW that law. That changes the RCW. I mean, can we can we make a vote that you get that that you per can, year? Not a vote. No. Um, the only let me just the only way there's actually only there's three there's technically four there's only really three ways that we currently as a fire district can get money from the taxpayers. That's a lid lift, restoring that dollar fifty. It's an excess levy or a maintenance and operation levy, which is what we're running here, which can go above and beyond that, right? And then a bond. Okay, um, that's really the only one. There is a fourth one that fire districts have access to, which is a fire benefit charge, um, but that takes a whole restructuring and we'll do that. Um, so, and just so you know, the one percent wasn't just for junior taxation; it was county too. Okay. That's so. why you saw Ty Menzer and some other people trying to raise that to 3% this year, which would have raised our taxes 2%. But if you look, your values may go up, but it doesn't mean your taxes went up. Just mm -hmm. that they got to get the share of what? Yes. No. They uh, can only get 1% more, too. But what happens is, there, it's... It's not, they're not really sure whether the county says, hey, uh, assessor, I need this much money for my budget, and he goes out and figures out what things are. That, that's real questionable how the, they're determining our values. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a way more That's, why you, gotta, that's but, why you gotta go for a uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So that's that's just that's some of the challenges that we have in the fire department. Right? There's, just, there's only so much that's ways we can fund the fire department. There is, and and yeah, those going out for grants are great, and we will continue to do that. Right? We will continue to compete and apply for those grants because, um, to be honest, that's just free money. If we get it right. Um, so we will continue to do that. Right? We're going to continue to find these other funding avenues. Another funding avenue that I didn't talk about that we we participate in is we as a fire district participate in state mobilization, um, which means that we take a we take an apparatus, right, and we send it to Eastern Washington for a fire, right? Um, and when we do that, um, the state reimburses us for that apparatus. They pay us, they reimburse us for the cruise time, um, so it's not a cost to us, and then they pay us uh, per day for that apparatus to be over, right? Um, and this year, I don't, have, I don't have the exact numbers yet, but you know that brings in some extra money for us, right? Um, so there, we try to find those other funding avenues that we have, um, but we're just limited. Awesome. The bulk majority of our funding is from local taxing. Also, we have um, we have three bonds right now, and all in District 11, which is Little Rock. And they're all going to be coming to uh, conclusion at the end of 2025, and one of them at the first half of 2026. So when you look at your taxes and you see where money is being allocated, not necessarily down here in Rochester, but up in uh, up District 11, we'll yep. it will show that there's no longer any funds being uh, taken from part of your taxes to pay for that bond. And that bond, the three bonds um, that we have is, one of them was to uh, update all of our new, uh, they're called SCBAs, the breathing apparatuses that the firefighters use. Um, ours were out of date, uh, old, and we needed to replace all of them, so we went out for a bond on that many years ago. Uh, it also paid for two of our aid units, which, uh, we're still using the bikini, uh, and the other one was for um, one of our fire trucks. So, you know, at that, although we're asking for 38 cents, come the end of 2025, first part of 2026, the amounts being collected to pay for that bond are also coming to an end for the tax. The bonds, and I'll, I'll be honest, bonds used to be the, the main week way that fire department's funded, right? They need a new fire truck, we're gonna go out for a bond. You need a new uh, station, go out for a bond. Um, and bonds are great, um, except for they're, they're a long-term loan, in a sense, right? Um, that's what a bond is. So if we go out for bonds for stuff, um, yeah, your tax rate will only go up by maybe 20 cents per thousand, but it goes up for 20 cents per thousand for 20 years, right? Um, what we're trying to do is, honestly, just for right now, to kind of get us caught up and get us to this point where we could um, try to get this thing more. I don't really want to, it's not like we're not way off the tracks, but just to get us kind of back to resetting and taking some, some care of some of that stuff that we've kind of put off for a little bit, um, we're, we're hoping for just that one year, that, that one year to kind of get us back on track. Um, we're not going out for bonds um, for a 20 year loan. Um, because I don't think that's necessarily a smart thing for us to do either. Well, I mean, so. the, the concept is not for us to make money. No. It's to pay our bills and make it into the next year and then collect our taxes or our tax money for that year to pay for our expenses for that year. It's not like we're trying to pad our account or the, the only save, thing, save for the big rainy day. The only thing we try to save for are when we have to do those large purchases like fire apparatus, right? When we when we try to save for that stuff, so five years down the road we can try to buy and, a new apparatus. That's that's what we try to do, and we're currently not doing that. Right, because in 2022 the MNO levy ended for both Rochester and uh, District 11. And so the funds that we did have set aside to go towards apparatus went to paying our bills, sustaining us through that year and that year. Well, we've come to the end of that now, and um, we did the levy lid lift, and that was to basically continue to staff us 
And so the levy level of funds that come in, um, right around 5.8 million, is just going to be able to keep us staff and keep providing the services that we provide. It's not accounting for uh, an engine replacement. A, we just did a new, was it pump transmission? Something yeah, we had a new, we had a pump failure on one of our apparatus. And uh, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have the fleet reserves to take care of that. It was about a forty-five thousand dollar endeavor. So that just comes out of our regular, you know, day-to-day -day operations budget. So you have little things like that, new pumps in the well every year or at station six, you know. It's those things that we just can't, you know, with how the funding is coming in, we just can't catch our breath at that point. You know? and that's why it's only gonna be for one year. We're just trying to get by for this year and next year and then And then using those money and expanding them, right? So we collected twenty five, um, and we spend that we could spend some of that money in twenty five. But also 26, right? Um, and hopefully set us up for beyond that. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah I had a question. Um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. They closed the fire station over here. And then all of a sudden it opened up because something, I don't, you probably don't want to talk about this, but with the Shehalis tribe. Yes. Like yep. exactly what was the deal of like what they decided to fund it or? Yeah, so, so in a sense, um, yeah. And, and you don't need I, to go into No, I, I will go. So yeah. <laughs> I'm going to book here, right? There, there's nothing, again, this is your fire district, so I'll be a completely honest with and try to answer the question as completely as I can. Now, I was I in, understand what I, I will explain what I know. Um, I was not the fire chief then. When I can, I'll try to explain it the best I can. So, yeah, so back in 2023, um, uh, I, let me back up. So 2022, we, after failing of that levy, there was those magic, those massive budget cuts, right? Part of those cuts that we did was actually, uh, we did shut down uh, Station 1 for the Albany Street right over here, um, and shut down that um, for a period. And that was because, uh, well, we were trimming the budget. We trimmed it everywhere we could. Um, so that was one of the things that we did to trim that budget. So um, at that time, we were still working with the tribe. We were in negotiations um, with Shehalis uh, Confederate Tribe to work on a, a contract for service, right? So we were working on that with them at that time. Uh, they came back to us, um, and we, we negotiated, and there was a proposal that came back. And part of that proposal of the agreement is they asked that that station be reinstated. Um, which our thing with that was as long as that funding was able to offset that, um, it would be benefit, right? It's benefit to the tribe. They obviously want it because it's close to their facility where we provide services, right? Um, and then, but it's also a benefit to our community here because now we're opening up a fire station, not just for the tribe, but to provide that service. So that's kind of how that agreement okay. went down. Um, we're currently still in that agreement um, until uh, the end of this year, um, and we're still working with that, uh, and working with the tribe. So, to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that, is that when, um, <clears throat> so you pay taxes towards the the fire department through your property taxes. So when tribal tribal entities purchase properties and it becomes sovereign nation properties, we no longer get tax money from that property. Right. And so what we were trying to negotiate with the tribe is what's fair and equitable uh, based on the properties that you have that we provide services for. And so we are at the contract negotiation, it is, uh, they pay a percentage of the amount of calls that we respond to at their locations. So it is not what it would be if we were receiving tax dollars from all of that land. However, it is providing for the services that we do provide for their properties. What is the number that you're hoping to get in the cost of 11 38 cents per cost? Uh, you mean the dollar amount. So that dollar amount, that 30, and, and let me, so that 38 cents is an estimate. So as property go, values go up, that number actually would drop from 38 cents down. So when we actually go out, we ask for, for an excess levy, a maintenance and operations levy, um, we ask for an amount. The amount that we're asking for, for that one year, is 1.5 million, right? And again, that 1.5 million, 
um, to uh, help with that 2025 budget, but also that 2026 budget. Collecting only in the 2025. It's not very much. No. No, it's actually. Uh, let me see. If it comes out to, it comes out to just under. Uh, I think it's about just under 15 percent of our budget. Um, so. Mm. How's the DNR sales factor in your budget? So the DNR, so as, as some of you have heard of the county, um, Thurston County is challenging the timber sales um, within Thurston County, right, um, on DNR property. Um, those sales, part of that percentage of that sales, um, goes back into the local community, both the school districts, um, the fire district, we actually we get a small percentage of that as well. Um, so what I will say is um, we, we don't know, DNR has provided us estimates of how that would affect us. Um, we don't know for sure because we don't actually know what money we're getting from them until they write us a check and we get it in the mail. Um, but our average comes out to just about anywhere from twenty to 40000 a year. Yeah, it's not, it's not generous. It, it's pretty small for us. Mm -hmm. um, schools, it's a little bigger deal. Um, because schools obviously they get a larger percentage of those sales. Um, we get a pretty small percentage. So I mean, it, so it can it affect us? Yeah, I mean, having an extra twenty to forty grand that could really help us with buying some equipment we may need, right? Um, stuff like that. So is it helpful? For sure. Um, is, it, is it? Is that alone going to prevent us from going out for this levy? Um, no, no, it doesn't. It's not that big of a different in the overall scheme of things. But it sure would be nice to have that extra tax money um, from the uh, DR sales. Can people generate uh, forest land and designate it just for the fire department as income? Ooh, I have no idea. What was that? Can people designate forest land for income for the fire department? I, I don't know. Ooh, I, don't I don't think so. Because, I mean, that could make this a sustainable deal. They could. They could. Yeah, I, I, I do not know. It's, it's been done in Oregon. Has it for fire, yeah, fire so districts and local families? I'll talk to you about it now. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'd be interested to see. I, I've, uh, I've never heard of that, so that would be very interesting. If you've heard of a little company called Warehouser. Oh. Okay. <laughs> little, little company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the uh, But uh, the money that the, do you have a number that the tribe would be paying if they weren't a sovereign nation? That, <laughs> let me let me say that's a very that's a very hard question for us to ask. Um, and I'll say that because we don't have solid assessments um, on the current property, right? Um, now the assessor does have some the rough ones that they provide, but um, it, let's be honest, it's not full, right? So um, not full by how much? Uh, but I don't know. I mean, they're, they're in the fire district because they're in Thurston County, correct? They are. Yep. Yes. Now, um, oh, well, then my, that was my main question. Is you said that your agreement with them is going to end at the end of this year? Next year. It, it, uh, next sorry, year. next year. Okay. I think I, I might have spoke wrong on that. So. Well, I, I couldn't remember. That's why. Um, yeah. So, so let me just say that uh, us working with the tribe, we're not going anywhere, and Shayla's tribe is not going anywhere. Either. It's important that we work together, right? Sure. We we have to. Um, and, and they are very supportive of the community, and they they provide a lot of growth for the community. But we have seen, um, as of in the last. Say 10 years, right? Uh, a lot of growth in Grand Mound being on that property, um, which, if that growth was not on that property, we would see increased tax revenue from that. So, um, here's what I'll say first, and, I, and, I, and, and I'm not, and I'm not going to limit this information because I have this information that I'm hiding. Um, I just don't want to overspeak and. Um, because I'm not the most I'm not the most knowledgeable for it, right? I'm, I'm still learning this, uh, a lot of these contract stuff, um, and it's not my 100% forte, but I am digging into it. What I will say is the contract that we're currently on is the best contract that we have ever had with the fire district between us and the tribe, 
right? Yeah, it is it is the best contract that we've had so far. Is there room for improvement? Yes. Um, and will we try to work for that improvement? Yes. Um, will the tribe pair their fair share, as you said? Um, I don't know. Um, and so there is challenges with that. Um, and that is one of the big challenges that we have as an agency, right? Um, is just some of the, I mean, the largest structure within our fire district is on their property. So it's growing. We, you know, and, and it is growing. More ground last year. Yep. You got the state yep. taking over agricultural ground for yep. private or you know, state reserves. You know. Yep. And that's, so there, there's, we actually, um, so saying that we don't get it for trying, we don't collect tax money um, from the state either, right? right? So if there's state buildings that are, um, and I'll use like Maple Lane for an example, right? Maple Lane, we do not get tax revenue from Maple Lane. Now we do have a <coughs> service contract with them, right? That's based on their AV and based on our current tax revenue. So that's what we currently do with any of the state programs and those ones that don't well, make you don't, tax. You don't get any money on like uh, the release site. Yeah, no, not right? Nope. When they turn around and go buy it from a private landowner, then you've been getting tax money on it exactly. for the last 40, 50, 60 years. Yep. Right. Yep. We did not do the fire. Uh, yes, for sure. So, uh, on, you brought up Maple Lane, um, that size of a uh, state property with the infrastructure on it. What is the rough estimate for how oh, the we sees quarterly? We just, um, I'll just say yearly, I think we just signed a new contract with them, and I think right around 80, 88,000? Yeah, right around. Right around 80, we just signed a new agreement with them, which is based on that tax rate, 88,000 a year. So, so it comes, comes out to about, you know, yeah, 22,000, uh, or, yeah, 22,000 a so and that's what we and we have that those agreements with any of those state. Um, so like in our facilities we have Maple Lane, we also have uh, Cedar Creek Correctional, um, Bordeaux as well. So yeah, maybe. So Nathan, there's a lot of negotiation going on right now in Lacey with the tribe building the huge stuff. What do you think of? Something will come out of that that you can use as a comparison because I know that Ms. Foley tried contracts with Fire District 3. They do. For fire yeah. services. Is there any comparables that you can use on that? Uh, maybe. I, I know I'll communicate with the chiefs at Lacey. Hamlet's also pays. To do that. So uh, I think that is an important thing, yeah. yeah. To have those conversations and, and see it. And we're, we're not the first and the only uh, fire department to. Um, be dealing with this issue, right? Um, and, and we won't be the last. Uh, but but I think it is important. Now, I just want to restate this, right? Like we have to work with the truck, um, and they have to work with us, and we can work together, and we can come to some kind of uh, agreeable solution, right? Um, again, is it going to be perfect for all parties? Well, if you have a contract negotiation and any party comes up on top, that's going to be a contract negotiation, right? But. Um, I think there's areas for us to improve our relationships uh, and ensure that we're getting the um, the revenue that we need from them to support our agency. So what, in the future. what about because that fire, the land is actually in federal trust, right? It is. Yes. So uh, has, it, yes. has anyone ever tried to go out the feds for the money? I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. Right step down. They're, the, they're the ones who offer all the land and all the benefits. Uh, that was my thought one time, is why are the feds paying for the yeah. fire services? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a good example of that is with uh, the Great World Capital. There was a lawsuit. Yeah. Right, and they lost. Yeah. They don't pay anything. They don't pay anything. Right. The land is so these, these corporations that come in, they're not tribal. So these corporations come in, like Cabela's, up to them, up all those, they pay no taxes. They don't pay taxes on the improvements, right? It's just disgusting. And not, nothing against the tribe. That has nothing to do with the tribe. Mm -hmm. But it is wrong that it's, it's that way. We did use, um, we won originally in court. It was Patricia Costello on that lawsuit. And we lost an appeal. But then you look at our courts, they're pretty liberal, so. So, so one, of my, one of my goals moving forward um, is to continue to work with the tribe, right? Um, and and have that open line of communication so we can work through these issues um, and try to make again they're they're super supportive in the community in 
several different ways. And uh, we just want to see if we can help them out and they can help us out. Right? That's our goal. Right. So, um, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, what's the, what's the health of the team that you guys have right now? We, we, we talked about that. Yeah, we did. So, so we have a couple, um, we have a couple 1995 fire apparatus, right, um, that are still in service. We have one actually right over here on Albany Street that's in that location right now because one of our rigs is out for service. So uh, we, we use those 1995s as first out. Um, and those are aging. Now, we keep them serviced, we get them pump tested, um, and they pass and they keep that going. Uh, for how much longer? That's the concern, right? So are they still working? Yes, they're still working. They're on the road right now, and they're on service, and they're um, out there fighting fire. Um, and they're doing a good job at it. But as we start getting in that age, you know, um, that, fire, fire, that fire truck's been used for quite a while, um, and it is, it is aging out pretty quickly. So we are, we are, those are, when those get to the point where if we get a catastrophic failure in a 1995 fire truck, like we, like uh, Shannon explained, like the $40,000 pump, right? Um, that was in the 2007 fire truck. If we have a $40,000 pump that we have to put in a 1995 fire truck, that's not worth it, right? Um, we would probably be cutting that apparatus. What's the average life of the fire? Um, average life of the fire, that's, that's a good question. Um, Usually 20 years. 20 years is kind of usually the cutoff. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. Um, for one, that's generally just the lifespan that we see in the fire service in general. Um, and then the, walk, the Washington State Surveying and Rating Bureau, WSRB, that does your insurance ratings, um, they come in and they rate the fire department. Um, and 20 years is actually the cutoff that they have for that. So anything that's older than 20 years, you actually get a negative grade anything above 20 years. So there is some benefit to the agency not having apparatus over 20 years. Um, sometimes that's not always possible. So when I asked earlier what happens if the surplus stuff, just a curiosity question, is there other fire departments like Eastern Washington that would be buying some of the surplus stuff and still utilize it? They do, yeah. For for sure. 40 yeah. years? Yeah, they will, and, and they definitely will. Um, and I, we had a, on Alaska, there's that who bought our last fire truck on Alaska. They bought the Dakota. Dakota. The one we sold or the one that they bought? Um, the one they sold, Dakota? Dakota took one of the Okay, so we have sold them to those departments. Okay. Um, and, and that's for a couple of reasons. For one, we just, we just say it's not really worth our, right? We see that negative rating. Um, Sometimes some departments would rather take that negative rating on a fire engine because it gives them a positive rating on having just another station staffed, right? So they got to weigh that as positive. Um, for us, and again, we're there, right? We have two apparatus over 20 years. We tell ourselves, we, we've done the math, and we say it's better for us to have a slightly negative rating on those fire apparatus being over 20 years. But guess what? They're in fire stations where we'd have to buy new apparatus. So it's not really cost effective for us to do that. Um, but we do get to the point where those fire apparatus eventually, being that old, it, it gets to the point where it's not worth us putting a lot of money into keeping that thing in service, right? Um, we don't want to keep on throwing money at those, yeah. those old apparatus. Right. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Could you talk about the fire rating bureau and what we were able to do even through tough times? Yeah, what yeah. So, so we get a rating um, every three to five years, uh, the Washington State Serving Rating Bureau, that's the person that does your insurance rates, right? So your insurance company looks that information up and what they're able to do is they tell you how, basically it's a grade for the fire department, right? Um, and they grade you, the fire department's response um, for lower insurance rates. Um, over the course of uh, the last five years, we've been in general able to keep those rates fairly sustainable, right? Um, we haven't necessarily improved them, but we've kept them at the rates that they are. Um, now, there is a recent exception to that, right? Um, this last rating that we just had, we did get it up in the rating, um, which, is, which is bad. Uh, so an increased rating um, out in the 
uh, Maytown area, Maytown and Tilly River area in the Park District. Um, and that was because of the staffing of either the Scott Lake or the Maytown station, right? Um, we couldn't show that. Um, now, what I will say is our staffing hasn't changed out there in the last 10 years. So uh, I don't know why they recalculated it differently, but that's for a totally other discussion. Um, and we're seeing this with multiple other fire districts around not just the county, but the state, where the ratings are getting uh, more serious. My honest opinion, I think the they were very loose in their interpretation of fire districts and that grading process. And now, due to some of the insurance issues they've had in the state, I'm sure we've all seen that with insurance rates going up, um, they're being a lot stricter in how they evaluate that. And that's part of that. Now, what are we doing to improve that area? Because I think that is an important thing. So, um, rather than that immediately taking effect, we actually sent a letter to them asking for a one-year variance to address that issue. Um, and for us to address that issue, for us to show those stations as staff, right? Because those stations, uh, and I'll say the Scott Lake station specifically, we do not put staff there 24 hours a day, right? It's a station, it has an engine in it, um, but because it doesn't have 24 hour station, 24 hour staffing for the Washington State Serving and Rating Bureau, it's not counted as a staff station or responsible station, so therefore it does not count in that five mile, road miles to those properties that are going to reduce rating. So we asked for a one year um, kind of variance on that to allow us to get that up to that number. For us to show those stations as staff, there's either two things we have to do. We either have to have two people, firefighters there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time, and we gotta pay for that. Or we have to have volunteer staffing, and we have to have six volunteers, right, within five road miles of that station, for that to be considered a responsible station. Now, here's the good news. I told you that we, we upped our volunteer numbers, right? Um, four of those new volunteers that we brought up that are going through training live within that five miles of that station, right? We're only two away <laughs> from having that station actually being qualified as staff, and we're working towards that. So that's our goal, in, and that's one of our goals with upping this volunteer program, um, is so we can staff these stations and have responsibility response out of there. Um, although it might not, be, might not be 24 hours a day, at least it's something, and that counts for the Washington State, their survey bureau. So that's one of the things we're trying to do out of that area to make those stations staff. Um, but I will throw out there, we're always looking for volunteers. If you want to volunteer, um, come on in, right? Um, so, but that's what we're trying to do with that. The rating bureau is, they look at everything, right? They look, some of that stuff is in the control of the fire department, right? Like our training expectations, our staffing, our apparatus and fleet age. Um, some of that stuff is, we are able to change that stuff. Other stuff we can't, right? Water system. Well, we're not in charge of the water system, right? The water associations in Thurston County are. So that stuff is outside of our um, forte and, and we have no control in that grade. So there's some of that stuff that's outside of our control, um, but there is stuff in the center of control. We're trying to control those the best we can um, to try to get that best rating. Uh, I would say for the foreseeable future, no major changes. Um, we should be able to sustain those um, those numbers, those ratings within our community, um, and and hopefully out in the Tilly area, uh, Tilly and Maytown Road area. Um, if we're able to get some volunteer staffing up for that station, we'll be able to mark that and actually keep that rating without it going up. So that's our goal. Now, one simple question. Yeah. My wife and I are, you, know, you consider us new residents. We've been here five years. Okay. Yeah. And we're on well water. Okay. Yep. Most people are out here. Yep. Okay. So, in a case of a fire, I mean, you don't have fire hydrants. We do not. So, what do you use to supply? Yeah, you know, with the water to so, fight the fire. So we bring our own water with us. So uh, in our in our tank water, so all of our fire trucks have tank water. Depending on the fire truck, we have anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars or thousand dollars, thousand gallons on each one of our fire trucks, right? Um, but that's often not enough, right? Yeah, so we actually, we, we have, so we have what's called tenders. So we have water tenders, um, think of big tanker trucks, 
Um, those have 3,000 gallons each. Um, in our fire district, we have three of those. So we have one over here in Rochester, uh, on Albany Street. We have one in Grand Mound um, in, uh, on Sargent. And then we have another one up on Little Rock Road, at the Little Rock Road Station. So we have three of those tenders. Mm -hmm. For that, so that's one of the things Washington State Rating Bureau looks at, right? I mean, that's one of the things we have control over, is if you don't have water systems available, they look at your capability to bring what they call a rural water supply to the state. Yes, yeah, so, so we actually have, our fire district has the right, highest rating possible for a rural water supply because we have that many tenders available. Um, so um, now that's not the only tenders that we can call upon in the fire, right? Um, we have mutual aid agreements with all of our neighboring fire districts, and if we have a large fire, that's why you'll see a Tenino okay. tender, maybe a tender from Riverside down in Lewis County, maybe Oakville, um, McLean, right? You'll see those because we have mutual aid agreements, so they come and help us out, and we do the same. Okay. Not that I hope it ever happens, but <laughs> yes, no, be prepared. That's our whole business is being prepared for that, right? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I know we had a couple questions. Did anybody write any on the... I got one here, I believe. So I do have one... Anybody have any questions they wrote? If you if feel free to bring those up if you want to. So I do have one question that someone put up on the podium. Um, what are the three priorities moving forward? And uh, how will they be accomplished? So. Um, that's a great question, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm working through those. Uh, so I'll say um, my one of my top priorities is keeping that volunteer program sustainable. Right? Um, we've we've had a good year in that volunteer program. Right? Bringing in 12 people. Um, now we need to be able to sustain that. Right? Here, here's the honest truth when it comes to volunteer firefighters is. Uh, Volunteer firefighters do not typically stay in that position for really long, right? We're not seeing that. We used to see, there used to be 30 year volunteers in the fire department. Um, we just don't see that nowadays, right? I'm not saying they're not out there, they are. Um, and we do have a couple that actually are with our agency. Um, we have one that just retired for 25 years, another one just right, retired with 30 years. But those are they're retiring out, right? We're not getting, um, those people that want to stay in that for that long. So part of that though is making sure that that volunteer program is sustainable. So we're bringing in maybe six to twelve every year or every six months. Um, knowing we're probably going to have after a few years we'll probably have a couple leave. So we need to keep that program sustainable. We cannot get to the point with that volunteer program where we say, "Ah, we have enough. We're good to go." No need for any more volunteers to recruit any more volunteers because that's the time when you've got someone to leave and then it takes you a, a six months to a year to train up someone new to take their spot, right? So we have to have that kind of flow and have that system for sustaining um, that volunteer program for the long term, right? Uh, another priority, and we've talked a lot about it here today, um, the funding, right? Trying to squeeze every bit we can out of that funding that we have. Um, and I'm going to say funding is in general, right? If that's the the, uh, the sorry the maintenance and operation levy that we talked about, if that's those uh, contract agreements that we also talked about, um, if that's grants, if that's trying to squeeze every bit of the funding that we possibly can into our district, um, so that we can make that sustainable again for the long term, right? Um, our goal is not to be asking for money every year. Um, that's not what we want to do. It's not sustainable, right? Uh, I'll be honest, us as the fire district will get burned out. You as a community will get burned out, right? That's not sustainable. We need to get to the point where we're sustaining that for the long term um, you know, with that budget. So that's one of my other priorities. Um, let's see, I went really vague with both of those ones. So now I'm just trying to think of my third priority. Yes. Uh, I know as a commissioner, uh, we worked really hard to cut a position out this year. Um, we brought some captains up to battalion chiefs so we could X out the assistant chief position uh, to save taxpayers quite a bit of money there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So um, that just happened recently. Um, 
There was a direction for the fire district to hire an assistant chief. Um, the decision was made to kind of go away from that. Um, so we're not looking at hiring an assistant chief. Well, we did promote um, our shift officers to battalion chiefs, um, from captains to battalion chiefs, so they can help support and take some of that um, administrative workload um, that would be spread out from that. Right? So uh, we have made some changes there, um, and we'll continue. So maybe, maybe the third one um, would be uh, find those staffing and those response challenges that we have, right? Uh, we have, uh, again, I think we've been doing a great job as a fire district in responding to that stuff. But there's always efficiencies, there's always ways we can do better. So uh, trying to find those efficiencies that we can do better. Um, and I'm gonna throw a fourth one out of there, which is actually the big one that we talked about early on, uh, getting out there in the community, right? That's me coming to these meetings, regardless if we're running a levy or not. Right? My goal is that we'll, I'll be doing a town hall every six months um, so that we can have these talks. And I'm, I, I'm glad that we had the showing that we had here today and that people had great questions. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I want to continue on with that, with me getting out here in the public and then also our crews, our responders, getting out there in the public in those public events because those are hugely important. So does the county sheriff pay you rent? We're having an office there. In the they do, yeah, out of our, so we do have a county, um, there's county sheriffs, uh, they use the station 1-1, uh, which is on the Sergeant Road right there. Um, they have an office, and you probably see their car there all the time. Um, yeah, so they do, they pay us rent. Uh, it's pretty minor, um, you know, just a rent for an office, one office space. So are they there all the time? They are not there all the time. So what they use, they use that building um, and that office, like, if they're, after they get done with the call, they'll come back and they'll like do the report. So it gives them a spot where they can stop and do the report. Rather than going all the way up into Tumwater, which is one of their headquarters spots, um, it kind of gives them a place locally here so they can stop, get a report, you know. Go to the bathroom. Use the bathroom. <laughs> use, use, make, you know, have lunch, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. So um, they're there. You'll see their vehicle there quite often, um, just as they rotate around. They have, it's usually not one of them, there's usually two to three units that run in this area. So you'll see one of them there and then he'll leave and another one will come there and do his report. So they're always shuffling in there. Seems like we got a new uh, new uh, sheriff there, uh, deputy coming in and out every um, every hour or so as they do their work. But yeah, they use that office space. We're the main thing, the pliers. These are the pliers. Uh, well, uh, the pliers. Uh, oh, the pliers. Oh, the pliers. He actually... <laughs> Yeah, coming from the retired. Did you do that much, huh? At least, at least we're getting that revenue for the party department to the bank. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. So they're they're really good about doing that. Um, yeah. They don't come up. We encourage them to come over and talk with us, right? And we we enjoy talking yeah. with the cops there. Um, those guys, I'll be honest, they're pretty busy most of the time. They don't have time to sit down and take naps. <laughs> <laughs> Spider versus law. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any other questions people have? Um, I was just going to say they can talk about commissioner meetings where they always go over the Yeah. Yeah. So we have commissioner meeting. It's the second Monday of every month. Um, so second Monday of every month. It is at 5.30. Um, and it rotates between the 1-1 <coughs> station off of Sergeant Road. Uh, in the Little Rock station up off of Little Rock Road. So it goes back and forth between those stations. Um, odd number months are down south of the Sergeant Road station, I think I have that correct one, and then even months are up at the Little Rock station. So those are public meetings, right? That's where our commissioners, um, we have three of our commissioners here today, right? Um, we have a total of six commissioners, but that's where they're the ones um, they're my boss, right? They're the ones that give me directions, uh, the fire authority, and they're the ones that uh, report to all you citizens that are voted in um, as the board. So um, everybody's welcome to come. 5.30, 5.30, second Monday of every month. So, and that's also, those are also accessible by Zoom as well. So we also have, we also have a Zoom link for every single one of those um, up on our website if anybody wants to come. So who's our three commissioners? So the three commissioners for so, so yeah, let me just 
Oh, oh yeah, we have this. We have three commissioners from Rochester area, uh, which is Jeff Berryman, right? Thank Alvin you. Dahl. Um, and then our third commissioner who is not here tonight is uh, Robert Scott. And then for up north in the Little Rock district, uh, we have John Ricks. Um, we also have Mike Reed and Tom uh, Tom, uh, Tom Cole. So those are the three up north and the three south. And, commissioner. and then retired commissioner uh, Al Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody have any questions? Okay. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I really do appreciate it.